okay let's do these rocks now i'm going to take um let me see let me see i start with a small slap brush okay let me just pull my sleeves up here and what i'm going to start doing first is just blocking in all the dark areas of the uh, rocks all right so i'm just going to dampen my small slap brush i'm going to take some burnt umber and i'm going to take a little cadmium red now i'm using thick paint on its own um for this because i really want this color to really really stick okay um no i'm going to start along the top so we really have um just a lot of thick blocks showing through of rock okay um there's really no technique to this it's i suppose just putting in lots of rock okay lots of areas of dark brown and just black and all that sort of stuff in there and at the same time look i'm not copying the reference photograph exactly i want to put my own little bit of a spin on this as well and that's a good idea and, you know people sometimes just spend so much time trying to get everything exactly the same i prefer to just kind of go my own way and just try and keep it simple and just to the point of what I want, okay? Um, a lot of people, they spend so long, they really do, trying to make something look exactly like a photograph or exactly like what they're painting. Um, for me, I just, I, I don't know, I just, I just get kind of slightly bored, I suppose, trying to make something look exactly the same. So I just generally tend to put my own my own sort of spin on a scene. Now if it's something I really like, you know, if it's if it's something that I really do want to make the same, then yes, I will try to um make it as close as possible to the photograph. If it's really that lovely that I really love everything about the photograph. But look in general I think just making something your own. I'm. It's hard to kind of explain. The only reason I'm really using this reference photograph now is, I suppose, for colour, really. Um, looking at the different shades that are going on. So, for example, I can see a dark on the back of that. I can see another very dark one showing through here. And I'm just literally picking up a tiny amount of turpentine now and going right into black, okay? Over here, we have a couple of nice ones coming across. So these ones I done earlier, they're behind this rock, okay? I can maybe bring some of them back out again. But in general, I'm just really going along and popping in some nice dark colour wherever I see it. Um, there's a lot going on here, isn't there? There's lots of water going along the top of the rocks and all that kind of thing. So I just put a suggestion of one or two in here like that. I'll have some lights going on top of that in a moment. So the thing about the ones down in the front here is I'm kind of really just putting in some of the dark areas that I can see. And I'll be putting some nice bright spots on top of these then. Um, a light pink even or something like that. So what I'm painting right now is really just the dark sides of these rocks. The really dark black lines that you can see. And I'm just really focusing on making it look very, very busy. As if there's a lot going on. And there is a lot going on. But I'm trying to simplify it for you as well. So just block in. All the little dark areas, there's lots of little rocks and stuff like that pointing up, sticking up through the shallow water, isn't there? So it's literally a lot of dark marks with my little flat brush. And the flat brush is very handy for this. You see, you can get little sharp lines. Put some suggestion of one or two of them in here and there. And this will make a nice little tutorial now for if, if you're struggling painting rocks and things like that i think this should help okay 
you see the way I'm just being very loose with a lot of this. So I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to go right into a black. Just black on its own, nothing else. And I'm going to start putting in some nice darks around here. Okay, I'm focusing on the darks in the rock. So wherever you see a dark piece of a, a rock, just pop a suggestion of a very dark black in there. And these will really show off the highlights later on. And that's what I always say when painting rocks like this, um, especially in the seascape, make your darks very, very dark, okay? Really dark. And that will help your light colors jump off of your canvas, okay? It really will. Just black paint on its own, nothing else. You see, I'm just putting in a series of dark marks on the rocks, just here and there. So we've kind of started, started picking out the main ones, if you like. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to mix a very dark purple for some of these. So just give the brush a quick clean there. I'm going to go into some phthalo blue. And I'm going to pick up some magenta. I suppose it's like a, a plummy, a plum kind of a colour, okay? A dark purpley mauve. And I'm simply going to just go along and suggest in some of those darker areas this sort of pinky purple sort of a colour, okay? Pinky purple, let's just say pinky purple on the shadows themselves. And that soft colour, even a touch of white, that soft mauve colour will add some highlights to the shadowed areas. So you can kind of see what I mean here. It just adds a little highlight to the shadowed areas. And it's really nice. It makes a big difference. And you see, I, you know, these will be softened in a bit okay so don't worry about getting them absolutely perfect a bit more phthalo blue and magenta i'm using just paint on its own okay nothing else um I'm over here probably perhaps add a touch here and there on some of those now we can always while we have that color on our brushes, okay? While we have it, we might as well use it. Let's take that dark color and let's just start putting in a couple of darks here and there as well. And it's really, I suppose, only just to use up the color while it's there. That's all, that's all I'm doing. Because we need to make this look very busy don't we? And you see the way I'm just kind of softening some of the ends of those rocks out into the water. Just adding a little dark here and there. And then when we come to putting in a very bright, bright blues, it will really jump off of the board or the canvas okay so you can kind of see now it's starting just starting in the early stages to take shape um put a little bit up around here and there now you can also if you like look you can just grab a palette knife and go to town with a palette knife and use a palette knife as well absolutely but i just prefer sometimes using the brush like this it just gives me a bit more control the palette knife is wonderful, but sometimes I just love using a brush for this type of work. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I won't overdo this. And I'm going to start putting in 
some highlights on these rocks. Now, you could use the palette knife for the highlights as well, if you like. Um, I think I might start off with this brush just to get some of those initial highlights in and then we can maybe use a palette knife just to get some of the really bright colors on. All right, let's try it. Now, a nice bright warmish kind of a color. Let's go with Naples yellow. Let's try a little cadmium red. Now, I, m I might even get out some cadmium yellow as well because I think a hint of cadmium yellow just to make a nice orangey kind of a highlight would make a big difference. I need to be careful with my cadmium yellow now because I do have a little bit of green just on the paint. So let me just grab a touch of that. Okay, a little touch of that and a touch of cadmium red. That gives us a nice kind of a warm orangey color. Now my brush is not spotless. You see the way my brush has a little bit of color in the base? I should have cleaned it perhaps a bit better. Let's just try this and see. Okay, maybe a little bit on the soft side. So what I'm going to do is just give that brush a really, really good clean first and start again. Okay, cadmium yellow and a touch of cadmium red. A nice sunlit colour on the rocks. And I'm just cleaning the tip of my brush each time I do this, okay? I know you may feel that you're using a lot of paint or whatever. But, trust me, you need to keep your brush nice and clean for this. Touch of cyanide with cadmium yellow is always a nice mix, isn't it? Nice, rich colour. Yeah, you see, that's coming together nicely now, isn't it? We're starting to just catch some highlights, start to bring them up. Okay. And I suppose it's really about having some fun, isn't it? You don't want to take this all too seriously because if you start doing that, you will become obsessed with trying to get this absolutely perfect. So look, I would never become really obsessed with getting something absolutely perfect. I just like to have a bit of fun when painting. And that's what it should be about, okay? Having fun. I get no satisfaction whatsoever in trying to replicate something exactly. I get no satisfaction. It just, I find it too much work, okay? Really, at the end of the day, that's how I feel. It's just too much work. I prefer to keep something, just a nice little impression like this. Um, let's go, let's add another touch of red, actually. Make it slightly warmer. And I'm going to just really catch some nice warm highlights and you see the way i'm just kind of putting these on and leaving them just kind of simple solid brush strokes i'm not trying to blend or anything like that that will come later i'm just initially trying to brighten them slowly bit by bit now what i'm going to do is just start softening some of them in here and there, okay? So I'm softening the light into the dark and vice versa. I know we're going to get a nice mix of colours then going through your rock. Give the brush a quick clean every now and then. Okay, you can begin to see there's things happening. Now, I'm going to mix a very bright pink. All right, I'm going to go with a very bright pink next. So 
I'll take some magenta. Lots of white. There's even a touch of blue in here as well, all right? A little touch of blue. So magenta, white, a very small touch of blue, and some Naples yellow. And I want to put this lovely soft pink on some of these rocks, especially over here, okay? So, for example, there, there. Because as they come over, they seem to cool down, don't they? Slightly cooler shade on the rocks. So I'm going to just soften them down to a soft pink. I put a couple over here as well. Just to balance the painting out, okay? It's really just to balance the painting out. Um, I do have a habit of br bringing colours across slightly. Uh, that's really just to help the composition. Um, so if you have very contrasting colours on either side of your painting, it will just not work with the composition. So I always tend to carry colours throughout a painting, if you understand what I mean. So I transfer the colours across the canvas and that just ties everything together. I'm going to pop some of this pinky colour in here and there, in between. So you can see now, at the moment, it does look very sort of messy, we'll say. I'm just going to start softening some of the colour in, just in between those rocks. In fact, I'll get another brush. Let me get a fan brush, actually, something a little bit stronger in bristle. And I just want to kind of soften some of this in here and there, okay? So you can see I just have to take in the edges off some of the paint here and there. The next job after this will be to get some nice darks and put in some of the finer dark lines, okay, some of the details. You see, just kind of soften them out slightly. And it's almost flattening the rocks down into the water a bit. Okay, now I'm going to stand back just for a moment to take a look at what I have. I do apologize. And okay, we need to get a palette knife out, I would say. I'm thinking a palette knife would help get some nice strong colors on this. Let's take some black and some Halo blue. Little white. And some magenta. With that colour now I'm just going to pop a couple of darks in here and there. It's really just to create a lot of extra rock, almost kind of sitting in the water, if you know what I mean. Grabbing a lot of colour, lots of different colour, and what I'm going to do is take a pointy brush, okay, and I start putting in a little bit of detail in this. Let's start doing some detail, some fine, fine detail. When I say fine detail, an impression of lots of darks, okay. I'm going to take some turpentine with some black, and I'm going to simply start putting in and refining the edges of the dark sides of all of these rocks, okay. You can see what I mean. I'm just putting in suggesting a 
lots of darks okay just lots of black and some turpentine that will bring them forward a bit more then and I'm simply just sort of wiggling my brush around really there's no particular technique to this it's just letting your brush dab here and there and just putting in some nice darks on the back ends of these it's just really as I was saying earlier, create, make nice strong shadows and nice strong darks and then the lights will really, really pop. That's pretty much what I do when I'm painting. So always nice strong darks. I will be putting in a lot of bright blues in between all of these as well, as you can see on the photograph. So I'm not too worried about making it maybe slightly messy or whatever. Okay, I'm not really. Um, it's just about creating that impression of lots of stuff kind of going on in the painting. And use plenty of turpentine in this now. Don't be shy with your turpentine. It's almost like a watercolour for me. Those little hints of blue that I put on earlier, that, that purpley shade, is helping the shadows. Just helping the shadows to just sort of jump slightly. Okay, I'm not copying the photograph exactly. I'm kind of making this my own as well. I don't want to copy the photograph. I'm just really focusing on my own painting here. I haven't even looked at the reference photograph really in the past 10 minutes. Um, I just want to do my own rocks and have a bit of fun. Okay. Now, I am going to grab a palette knife and I'm going to do a bit of work with the palette knife I think on some highlights should we try it I think we should let's get a flat one for a change let's try our flat palette knife take some Naples yellow let's come down here and a touch of magenta And you don't need too much, okay? Just a little bit. Let's see, can we put some nice highlights on some of these rocks? Okay, now that's quite nice, isn't it? Sort of dabbing with the knife here and there. And that's creating quite a nice effect, isn't it? Very nice. Already I like it. Magenta, Naples yellow. I don't want to go too yellow with this. I want to go more of a sort of soft, kind of a pinky orange hue. Would that be, would that make sense? And a little bit across there. And then just to carry that over, I'm going to slightly add more pink. 
just to bring it across here slightly. Okay, it's coming together slowly. Now I just need to fix this piece here. Okay, and just soften little touches of it in here and there. Now I'm also going to take a slightly light blue some phthalo blue a little white and some magenta with the knife and I just want to pop a little light in here and there to some of those Right, I'll stop because I will end up doodling. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get a flat brush. And I'm going to mix a nice bright color, bright bluey color. Let's get some phthalo blue with some white. Little thinners in this, just to thin it slightly. That helps it flow nicely. And a touch of magenta. I'm going to try this and just put this in between some of those rocks, okay? And this is just a medium shade. I will be going much, much brighter than this very soon this is just sort of the first step in just filling this in and making it look again making it look busy that's all A little more on the pinky side. And I'm just being very, very random with my brush now, okay? So I'm using this now to sort of just sit the rocks down ever so slightly. And at the same time, I'm kind of just helping soften the rocks down into the water just a little. I'm going to start going much brighter with this. Now you could use a small round brush. I think I'll start with a small round brush first. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue and lots and lots of white, okay? Now I'm going very, very bright with all of this. A little thinner as well, just to help it flow. But I do have a huge amount of white in this. Let's mix up plenty of this hair now. And I'm going to just start putting in some lights again, here and there. Now, it's tricky to do this because the paint is so wet on the canvas or the board that it's mixing with the colours underneath. 
but you will see a difference. Just keep at it and you will see a difference. Let me just get this bit of blue off my brush here. You may find this starting to get a little messy as well. Um, if it starts getting messy, just give your brushes a really good clean. Sit back and take a break. Even just sit back, have a cup of coffee and look and decide your next step. I'm just going in around these rocks with some nice rich blue. Okay. The final step in a moment will be maybe some with a palette knife. We could try doing some of this with a palette knife as well. And maybe even create some splash around here and there on the way on, on the rocks as well. I think that would make a, a big difference, wouldn't it? Right, let's go in and get some nice white. I'm just going to pop some little bits of white here and there. You see the way I'm just doing wiggly lines, lots of little wiggly lines. It's just helping to create movement in the water, that's all. And let's even try our smaller detail brush. Let's grab some white on its own. And let's just pop some white in here and there. And that will really give us some movement in the water as well. So I'm paying particular attention with this to the rocks. Just going around the rocks like this, you see. Around the rocks creating the effect that it's shallow and the water is running around in between the rocks. Okay? Now I know it all maybe looks a bit fussy and a bit messy, but this is just one step in the process, that's all. And we're trying different things. We're trying different things just to get the look that we want. I just want to get a very sort of messy, watery look. That's all. I'm just trying to get that look of a very messy ocean coming in and just breaking and going randomly here, there and everywhere. And look, if I don't succeed, why am I just keep at it? But, you know, it's it's a matter of, for me, personal taste, really. If you're happy with something, leave it. If you're not happy with it, try and change it. But I'm happy enough so far. I think this is going quite well. I have a nice, fast-moving ocean coming in. Okay. I'll stop there, and I might try... Now, this could go very wrong, okay? But I might try some white on my palette knife just to create some texture here and there just a little I think it would help again adding to that very rough very fast moving water and then we can also if we like get a fan brush and suggest perhaps a little touch of spray here and there on some of these 
rocks. It's really, I suppose, just a suggestion of lots of turbulent water, isn't it? That's kind of what I'm trying to suggest, really. Um, turbulent water. Now, I won't use that fan brush, actually. I'll get a small pointy brush. Okay? And look, you can just put little suggestions of water just catching some of the rocks as well a couple of little dabs here and there i need to lighten this ever so slightly in here as well there's a bit of a sharp line between the light and the dark in there I just wanted to transfer it slightly across, merge it together. Now, I will take a soft brush and just flatten this out ever so slightly, okay? Just some of it. Because by doing that, you're giving the impression that it's a very flat surface and it's very close to the sand underneath as well okay so by doing this it's just giving the impression that it's just a nice flat surface and you can even soften some of those rocks in as well just to give you a slightly softer look if you like okay Does that makes sense well, i'm going to stop it there and i just want to finish this area first and we can after that then once we've finished pretty much everything we can go back and look i'm going to put a nice dark area in here some black a little bit of the blue bit of the brown even pop a little brown so we're going for a very muddy sort of a sandy color okay Up at a slight angle like that, all right. And then I'm going to darken it slightly as it comes down. Bit of magenta and even a touch of burnt umber. Just as it comes towards us, just a little. Soften it upwards. Okay. Then I'm going to just, quite simply, let's put in some nice foam breaking along the edge. Just a very slight hint of a foam, okay? Um, I don't want to go crazy with this. Naples yellow and a little magenta. I'm going to put in a little foamy colour just breaking along here. Try some cadmium red with the Naples yellow actually. Make give it a slight warmer colour. So I'll start with that colour and just get my outline. You can see it's very, very subtle, isn't it? Very, very subtle. Now I go slightly thicker in some places. I'm going to just try to transfer that color then back in slightly to the water you see that just carries it backwards bringing the color backwards into the blue as well next i'm going to take a very bright white with a touch cadmium red going to go for a very bright bright pinky color 
and just pop that in here and there. And you can even take some Naples yellow and white and get some nice highlights of that color. Okay, just here and there. Just acting as a, a little bit of a separation, even more so. And you can bring one or two little ripples in onto the sand as well. very lightly okay just like that that just brings it forward slightly now we have a couple of little highlighted rocks in here as well which i would like to try and get in so i'm going to pop just one or two little rocks here and there like that and then take some black okay i need to get black i've no black left hmm. where is my black now all in all i'm pretty happy with this painting i could perhaps just go over some parts of it later on um if you want to you can absolutely you might wish to do that i might just go over some parts of it just touching up little bits here and there Um, but look, for a tutorial, I'm quite pleased it's turned out very nice. Now I'll soften these together, just dab them together ever so slightly. And then what I'm going to do is take some, let's say cerulean blue with white. They love blue even. I just want to put a little rim of water coming around some of those and almost sort of draining back down across the sand. And what that's doing is sitting them down on the sand, it's bedding them in. You see what I mean? It just sort of beds them into the sand a little bit. It just gives it a more, a more natural feeling, I suppose. Bring one or two from the outside as well. okay now last well last but not least i have a little shadow underneath this just to separate that from the water okay that should really set this off then blue pink and a bit of black so we're going for a very strong blacky purpley color and let's just go along under here pop a little touch of shadow in Here and there, just like that. Now, doesn't that just set that off quite nice? And then I think just for the final part, I might just add a nice thick band of white just here and there along that section. Just white paint on its own. I think that just really helps it stand out a little bit more, doesn't it? And then just a couple of little ripples here and there. Just to create a little more movement behind that. And when I say ripples, I mean literally just little wiggles with your brush, okay? And um, that's all I'm doing. Small wiggles. Think of snakes. That's what I do. Think of a lot of little snakes wiggling their way around on the water. That helps me. That's probably the easiest way of describing it. Now I'm just going to soften some of these in here, drag them across the sand.
just to create that effect of the water pulling them across, dragging that bit of water across the sand. Okay. Um, next, I am going to put in a couple of seagulls. I think it needs something like a seagull in the sky. So I might go up here to the dark side and just pop a couple. up there let's go for three three is a good number so that was a little bit of white and then just a tiniest dab of black for the tips of the wings Okay, tiniest bit. It's just a suggestion anyway, that's all. A very, very loose suggestion. And my friends, I'm just looking around, I'm going to add some darks in here and there just to bring out some of the dark spots on some of the rocks, okay? Lamp black on its own. Just to bring them out a little bit. So just work our way across, adding little dabs of black here and there on some of the dark sides of the rock. It's really just to bring out the darknesses again, that's all. And those darknesses, remember, they really show the highlights. So you can see now how the darks really show the brights, don't they? And they make the brights look even more vibrant. Okay. So I think, I think I'll just leave it at this. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'll frame this now. This will look very nice and maybe a floating frame. And uh, we will go from there. But I'm just going to add the slightest hint of warmth into one or two of my colours. Cadmium red, burnt cyanide. And I just want to add a hint of warmth. Just on a few spots. can see I just started putting solid shapes in here and there my friends thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed that um, look I'm just going to soften this in together just slightly and maybe soften it backwards into the water as well Just a little, okay? I think that's helped. Yeah, just a bit. And even maybe you could soften some of that dark into the sand as well so it's not so pronounced. I think that's okay. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, okay, I know I probably took a little bit longer than normal with this, but... I really want to take my time and create a nice a nice seascape, a nice little painting. Sometimes it's nice to just take your time, isn't it? And 
enjoy enjoy your painting rather than just kind of rushing along trying to get it finished there we go I'm pretty happy with that I might just maybe soften some of the um, some of the rocks back into the water slightly like this because I don't want it to look like there's just lots of black blobs everywhere but look I'm going to just drag down at an angle some of these into the water um, I think that might help to make it look like they're almost being consumed by the water to a certain extent perhaps it will just help soften everything on the eye yeah that's a bit better now isn't it just a bit just a little bit and thank you so much my friends it's been such a pleasure painting for you today there we go little seascape small seascape well a big seascape um finished But I will tip away. I think I will tip away with this just slightly. Um, I might add, so for instance, I might just add a little hint of brown into the sand. I think it needs, I think the sand just needs a tiny hint of brown. Just take some cyana with some magenta and just suggest a little bit of brown through the sand here and there. Just a tiny bit. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, everyone. Let me turn the camera. It has been such a pleasure painting for you today. Up a little bit. There we go. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Um, if you even want to just take a couple of techniques from that, make it your own. Um, but most importantly, really, just have a bit of fun. Grab whatever tools you have. Don't be shy. Grab a knife, grab a piece of tissue, a bit of plastic, anything. And just have a bit of fun with it. You never know what's going to happen in painting. That's what I love about painting. You never know what's going to happen as you paint. Um, I probably had a different vision of what this was going to look like when it was finished. But nonetheless, I'm still very happy with it. I might just add a little bit more white or a bit more splash or something just here and there. But in general, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, a huge thank you to all my supporters, especially you, you, you on Patreon. Thank you so much. Um, I will see you next week. I have a quite a nice painting for you next week as well. It's something different. I think you'll like it. Um, so stay tuned. I'll see you very soon. And God bless my friends. Happy painting.